Hello, this is Tim Halbach, Morning Coronation Meteorologist with the National Weather Service at Milwaukee Sullivan with a recap of the winter storm that occurred on December 28, 2015. We had snowfall amounts ranging from 4 to 12 inches uh, from south central to east central Wisconsin and southeastern Wisconsin. Uh, we had strong winds between 40 to 55 miles per hour as some of that snow and sleet was falling. And our forecasts had uh, more freezing rain in them than actually ended up occurring, and I'll go into that in a little bit here. So that less amount of freezing rain uh, led to a lot more snow to fall. Here is the snow amounts that we had across the south, southern Wisconsin area with the heaviest snow amounts basically up by the Fond du Lac across the Sheboygan, Green Lake, Marquette counties in the north with less amounts to the south where a little bit more sleet was mixing in uh, with the snow as it was falling. Here's a radar loop showing that snow moving in on Monday morning from the south and it started off as all snow with uh, some strong 30 to 40 miles per hour winds. Those increased as the system moved into the area and as uh, it approached there was actually a lot more sleet that was mixing in with it. At this time we were expecting a little bit more freezing rain to be uh, mixing in but it ended up being more snow um, than any of the freezing rain could get because of the track that the system took. This moved out of the area mainly after midnight on Monday night going into Tuesday morning. Snowfall amounts for our forecast range on the top left that started on Saturday and while the amounts look pretty light the, the combination of strong winds and snow falling is uh, what was the main concern for this along with the high amounts of sleet and freezing rain. So just that entire general mix of snow, sleet, and freezing rain was enough of a concern that uh, we issued a winter storm watch uh, starting on Saturday. The next day, not a whole lot changed with the forecast still thinking about the same. We thought that there was going to be a lot of sleet and freezing rain mixing in as well, so some of the lower amounts. Same thing even going into early morning on Monday, right before the storm was about to start. We had snow amounts coming up a little bit but it still was looking like we were going to see um, some of those a uh, lot more freezing rain and sleet. When it became a little more obvious that uh, the track was going to go a little bit further to the southeast, uh, late morning on Monday we upped the snowfall totals going up to around a foot. So even this area down in southwestern Wisconsin was a little bit high compared to um, what we were thinking actually would occur. Here's uh, all the areas that were outlined with the uh, winter storm warning. So all the area, basically most of Wisconsin here, was in a winter storm warning with the system coming up. All right, so why didn't we get uh, why did we get more snow than was forecast? Well, number one, the track of the the system was forecast to be a little bit further to the west. So you can follow the blue circle here. This was the forecast track that we thought. It was going to take and with that track it would typically mean a little bit more warmer air getting pulled up into southeastern south central and east central Wisconsin but this actual track of the system went a little bit further to the south so that meant that that warmer air couldn't get up into our area and it meant uh, more snow and uh, that sleet because it wasn't warm enough to melt down uh, to the rain number two one of the things that we look at when we're trying to forecast uh, these mixed precipitation type events is what the temperature is doing above the ground. So um, just as an example, if you're in a helicopter, there's sometimes where if you were measuring the temperature where the temperature would actually be warmer right off the ground. So in this area, you, you would have maybe some snow that would be falling down through it, hit that layer, melt, and then at, before it hits the ground would refreeze in the sleet or stay as freezing rain um, if this wasn't cold enough. So that was what we were forecasting to occur. We were forecasting this where the snowflakes would melt, hit this layer, and come down to the ground as sleet or freezing rain. Well, what actually ended up happening was more like this where we didn't get that warm layer to come in and melt it fully down. So we had a lot more sleet or even just snow making it down to the ground. The further north and northwest you went, the the less this bump was to where it would warm up. So here's a general timeline of what occurred uh, Saturday, seeing that the storm was coming in. Our office, along with uh, neighboring weather service offices, issued a winter storm watch Saturday. 
winter storm warning on Sunday. Um, even though the snowfall totals weren't forecast to be that high, the impacts um, were obviously going to be rather large with the mix of uh, sleet, freezing rain, and snow. Uh, Monday, the snow moved in. We had those strong winds and sleet mixing in. Uh, actually had a couple reports of thunder occurring as well. And then uh, early on Tuesday, the storm ended. So here are some of the pictures that were sent to us uh, over by Freighter Hospital, low visibility with the snow. Uh, there were a couple uh, gas station canopies that were blown over as well. And then with the winds, we had some lakeshore flooding down by Racine. And this was some video by Daniel Lopez that passed that along. So the bottom line, we had uh, the snow heaviest in our northern counties, up by Fond du Lac, Sheboygan counties, uh, where that 12 inches and about 4 inches down along the Illinois border. Strong winds made uh, low visibilities, but wasn't low enough to be considered a blizzard, where you need a quarter mile or less visibility for over three hours, and that didn't occur. And uh, we had less freezing rain than we were forecasting, which led to more snow. So if you have any questions, comments, or pictures, you can email me or uh, uh, contact me at timothy.j.halbach at gnoa.gov.